Hey guys, and welcome back to another Lost Bits video right here on Tetra Bay Gaming, the series where we explore the unused, altered, and unseen content in gaming. It's been about a year since I made my first Plants vs. Zombies video on this channel, and since so many of you seem to enjoy those videos, we're back again here with the 2013 sequel, Plants vs. Zombies 2. Featuring updated graphics, new locations, and of course, new plants and zombies, this game turned out to be a pretty dang good successor. And before we start, if you haven't heard, I recently launched some new merch celebrating the 10 year anniversary of this channel, and shirts and posters are no longer being printed, so once the remaining stock is gone, it's gone for good. So if you'd like to support the channel and pick something up for yourself or as a gift, check out the link in the description. Anyways, with all that said, tap the like button below to grab some more sunshine. It's time to check out some Plants vs. Zombies 2 Lost Bits. Alright, so much like my video trilogy on the original Plants vs. Zombies game, for this first video, let's kick things off by checking out pre-release aspects of the sequel here. More specifically, numerous concepts and ideas that were scrapped. And there's a ton of these that, yeah, there's really enough here for pretty much a whole video, so strap yourselves in. Also, I guess I should mention that since this game is still receiving updates with new plants and such over 10 years since its initial release, there's always a chance that some of these may end up being added in the future, but as of the making of this video, they ain't there. For starters, we have this unused concept of a boss fight against the Gargantuar Zombie. This uses assets from the first game, so this appears to be from a very early point in development, presumably before most of, if any, of the new assets were made yet. And yeah, here we can see some large cop cannons, as well as numerous sunflowers, pea shooters, and walnuts facing off against a horde of zombies, as well as the big boss himself. Seems like a pretty cool idea, though I'm not sure how well managing hundreds of plants would work in practice. Next, there are a few concept sketches for different background ideas, and interestingly, some of these seem to feature concepts of the gameplay being seen from a different perspective than normal. There's this lower angle point of view where we can see a massive zombie giant in the distance. There's a sketch for a wooded area, one for a fall season, as well as a winter one. And interestingly for this last one, we can see like a mostly frozen river run between the two banks where the plants could seemingly be placed. And this I think could have made for some pretty interesting gameplay. Next up, there are several concept sketches of levels and areas, some of which did make it into the game and some that didn't. For the ones that did, there are some conceptual sketches of the player's backyard area, a very early sketch of the ancient Egypt stage, where it looks like this concept would have had it seemingly more so set in the 1930s, early Indiana Jones era with the tent, tools, and truck here, instead of actually taking place in ancient Egypt as Penny states that we are about 4,000 years in the past, though I guess we do see the explorer zombies there, I don't know. And in this dig site sketch, we can see some scaffolding, ladders, an Anubis statue, as well as a broken one, both of which appear to be placed on the feet of a sphinx. There's also a pair of sketches where we can see the stage looks obviously much closer to how it's seen in the final cut. Though here we can also see a scrapped idea for what I'm assuming is a time portal that I guess the zombies would have come in through. Then, although there are also concept sketches of Pirate Seas, Wild West, Dark Ages, and Jurassic Marsh, which apparently was once named Dino World, that look very similar to their final design, there's also this sketch that appears to be an early version of Frostbite Caves, where here the cave is much less interesting looking, and the right side here is completely missing the giant frozen face that's, well, certainly there in the final version. And like I mentioned earlier, there's also some conceptual designs for levels that never made it into the game. For one, there's this barn area, where we have this what looks to be an earlier design, and then this one that looks much more polished. Additionally, there's also this related sketch, which reveals plans for planting the plants on a flatbed trailer in this level that would have apparently been towed by a truck. A pretty cool and ambitious sounding idea. There are also several zombie designs meant for this area too, so it looks like there was a bigger emphasis on developing this map, at least compared to some of the other scrapped ideas. And speaking of those other scrapped ideas, there are also conceptual sketches for a football field stage, as well as an area seemingly set in France, as we can see the Eiffel Tower in the background, and more importantly, birds eating a baguette here. Now, early looks at the levels are cool and all, but what I'm sure most of you are more interested in are the titular plants and zombies themselves, and there's an absolute truckload of early conceptual sketches for those too. 
In addition to early sketches of zombies that are seen in the final cut of the game, like this set for the regular zombie where it appears a lot more expressive than they're normally seen, or this set with Yeti, Disco, and the All-Star Zombies, where the All-Star one can be seen holding either a Lawn Gnome or a Flamingo. There are also numerous alternate designs or zombie types that just straight up never made it into the game. There's an idea for what looks like a new and improved version of the Digger Zombie that could move around but could also change directions unlike the version in the previous game, as well as a scrapped casket full of clown zombies that, as seen in this diagram, would apparently emerge from their casket each in a different direction. Then, although we do see unique area-specific designs for the zombies, depending on which level you're playing on in this game, this sketch here appears to reveal different ideas for the cone and bucket head zombies for a few of the levels. For this prehistoric one, which I guess could go for either Jurassic Marsh or Frostbite Caves, the cone and bucket would straight up just be made of wood and stone respectively. Ancient Egypt's cone is seen here with a more pharaoh-like design, and the bucket had a completely different bird design in this sketch. And then the pirate cone would look much more like a pirate hat, and the bucket would turn into a keg of the good stuff. Now I think all of these designs are way more unique than the ones that ended up being used in the game, especially the pirate ones, as I think these are way more interesting than just a simple wooden bucket and a cone with a cross-boned band. And of course, you probably noticed by now that I didn't mention the Viking designs here, and well, that's because there aren't really any Viking zombies ever seen in this game. There's also not really a Viking-themed level in this game, I guess, so either this could hint at another level that was scrapped, or I guess maybe they could have fit in the Frostbite Caves level. And actually, as it turns out, there is a Viking-themed level in the China-exclusive game Plants vs. Zombies All-Stars, where a Viking level pretty similar to Frostbite Caves exists, but the cone and buckethead designs are still different. And since these Viking designs are lumped in with the rest here, it's possible that this level might have been planned to appear in Plants vs. Zombies 2 as well. Anyways, now going in the order of stages as they appear in the game, we got an early concept sketch of the Mummy Zombie, an even earlier one where it's seen in a quite different art style, alternate designs of the regular and buckethead Mummy Zombies where they're seen wearing a brown vest, there's a scrapped worker zombie idea that, similar to the barrel rolling and troglobite zombies, would see it pushing a large block that could have apparently crushed a plant instantly, and this idea was apparently reworked into the explorer zombies, which basically have the same insta-plant killing effect. Then we got some more scrapped mummy zombie ideas, including one of them wielding a sword, being all wrapped up, having a snake wrapped around their legs, there's a scrapped magic carpet riding zombie concept, this pair of scrap designs that's believed to be early male and female versions of the pharaoh zombie. And then finally, there's this super weird one that appears to be some sort of strange crossover between the Ancient Egypt zombie and the Neon Mixtape Tour. Then for the Pirate Seas level, we got a whole bunch of alternate designs. There's a much more unique looking pirate zombie design, a much, much more unique design for the Buckethead pirate variant where it would sport an old diving helmet. There's an early pirate captain sketch that would look quite different with different clothing and a different looking hat, would be missing an arm, and the parrot also appears quite different here too. There's a much different shirtless purple panted conceptual design for the swashbuckler zombie, the seagull zombie not all tied up as it's seen in the game, as well as it actually walking on the ground. And then there's also this set of sketches that reveals quite a few more scrap designs, including one looking through a telescope, one walking the plank, one sleeping in a hammock, a zombie that got backstabbed, a zombie having an allergic reaction to eating sea urchins, and more. Now next are some early designs for some of the Wild West zombies where namely the regular cowboy and the poncho zombies sport some different designs. There's an unused prehistoric zombie that could have been for either Frostbite Caves or Jurassic Marsh. Then we got what looks like an early version of the Hunter Zombie, and also scrapped zombie designs for both a Viking Zombie as well as a Hippie one. Then additionally for Frostbite Caves, there are early and alternate designs of the Dodo Bird, as well as a bunch of alternate cave zombie designs, including one holding a club, a design of the Troglobite with a moose skull hat, and then there's also what looks to be a design for the Hunter Zombie, where it can be seen holding a hatchet. Furthermore, there's also this set of sketches for a scrapped zombie type where two Yeti Imp fellas would be seen sledding on a zombie. And then if they crashed into a walnut or another obstacle, they would flip over two spaces and then start their march towards the next plant in their path. 
Although different, this is sort of similar to the Sloth Gargantuar, which does throw Yeti Imps when taking damage, so perhaps this sledding trio was reworked into that. Then, for Far Future, there's not only a scrap design for the Mecha Football Zombie, where it can be seen with longer legs, as well as commandeered by two zombies instead of one, similar to the Discotron 3000, but there are also quite a few conceptual designs for the Zombot Tomorrowtron. These include several with a bigger focus on using some mech hands, a flying ship, a longer multi-legged walker, as well as this larger mech that would seemingly only have one robot hand at the front. Interestingly, with all of these, Dr. Zomboss appears to have a much more alien-like design with a bigger and often longer cranium. And outside of these ones, there aren't really many other concept sketches for Dr. Zomboss, so based on these ones, especially this one, I'd like to speculate that maybe there was a plan for the Doctor's physical design to also change between the different areas the game takes you through, instead of just disguises and different mechs and such. Then moving on to the Dark Ages level, we got a scrap design for the Peasant Zombie in a range of color schemes, there's a handful of scrapped wizard zombie designs, most of which look more interesting than the generic looking ones seen in the final game. And we can also see this scrapped imp wizard zombie riding a sheep. There are scrap designs for a thief zombie including like a Robin Hood looking one and this barbarian one wearing a helmet. There's a scrapped soldier design, a scrapped imp hiding in a barrel, various sketches of a blacksmith zombie that never made it into the game. A much more interesting night zombie concept where instead of just a basic design with a night helmet, the zombie would either have much more armor or be hidden under a really cool suit of armor with a big shield at the front and would have an imp with some dynamite at the helm. And then here we also have several other designs for the shield, helmet, and like we saw earlier, there's also another weird crossover zombie here where it looks like a cross between the night zombie as well as a mummy zombie. For the Neon Mixtape Tour, we again have a whole bunch of unused zombie designs, such as some 80s-themed workout zombies, including this sweatband-clad Gargantuar, several alternate designs for MC Zombie, as well as the Breakdancer Zombies, a glitter zombie in a different dress, an alternate design for the hair metal Gargantuar, as well as some different mohawk hairstyles for the Punk Zombie. Then for Jurassic Marsh, we got a different looking basic Jurassic Zombie, a club wielding one with a saber tooth tiger costume that looks quite similar to the Hunter Zombie from Frostbite Cave. There's a scrapped cave woman zombie design, early sketches for the cone and bucket heads, another look at some zombies that would push a block that would seemingly also block direct projectile attacks, and similarly there's this scrap zombie that would push around a square wheel. I guess nobody ever said that these zombies were smart. And then finally here, there's this zombie type that went unused in this stage, where it would be seen holding a burning torch, similar to the explorer zombies. And I know we're talking about the zombies in this section, but there are also various concept sketches for the dinosaurs seen in the Jurassic Marsh, and here we can see some slightly alternate designs, colors, as well as this early set of sketches for the T-Rex outlining how it would function in the game. Then for Big Wave Beach, there's this one set of unused concept sketches that reveal a few scrapped designs for the Bikini Zombie where they had different hairstyles, makeup, as well as different outfits. Then in addition to a scrapped idea for a Greaser Imp, there's also these different shirts and hairstyles for the Pompadour Zombie as well. And then lastly, like I mentioned earlier in this video, there are quite a few zombie designs meant for the scrapped farm level that were ultimately never implemented. These include a regular farmer one, one with a boot on its head which I guess was supposed to be the conehead variant, the buckethead version for this area, ladder zombies similar to how they're seen in the first game I guess. There are several designs of zombies and imps holding a pitchfork or a cultivator and a little piggy here. There's a scrapped tractor zombie with also scrapped tractor design, some of which look like they could have been a boss of their own or more likely driven by Dr. Zomboss. And then there's also this zombie type that would have carried a scarecrow, and this one was also later apparently planned to have been used in the Wild West level. And I guess maybe that's why this farm level was scrapped, as either it did get reworked into the Wild West level, or it was deemed that they were just too similar. And this idea is only reinforced by the fact that we can see the zombies seen in the Wild West level mixed in with this page here that features the farm layout as well as several of the zombies intended for the farm level. Ooh, okay, and that's basically it for the zombies, so now let's finally switch gears and talk about the other half of this game's title, various alternate and scrap designs and concepts for the plants. 
It's pretty crazy to think that with 188 plants in the game, there are still some designs and ideas that haven't been implemented over the years. Anyways, in the interest of time, I'll try to go through most of the more notable changes seen in these designs. So for starters here, we have a scrapped mammoth walnut, as well as an unused spearmint plant that, well, is a spearmint that has a mint spear. Yeah, you get it. Now, although there is a spearmint plant in the game, a whole family of mint plants actually, it looks nothing like this and is much less menacing looking than this scrap design with its crazed war face. And then the Mammoth Walnut here, I guess could have been for the Frostbite Caves level or an early version of the Primal Walnut that's seen in Jurassic Marsh. Next, there's a scrapped pineapple that's sketched as either jumping and slamming down, firing off slices of itself, or shooping to whoop. There's this unused emergency carrot that was likely reworked into the intensive carrot who although looks less unique, still has a healing ability. And there are also several early designs for the intensive carrots to boot. Then we got what looks like early designs for the iceberg lettuce, dartichoke, and beet that would seemingly deal with a different type of beating. There's a pair of unused cacti that would likely use their beefy arms to punch up some zombies. And although this idea was seemingly reworked into the bok choy, the cactus from the first game was eventually added to the game. There's this sketch of an unused flying plant that appears very similar to the loquat plant seen only in the Chinese version of Plants vs. Zombies 2. Then we have several concept sketches of what looks to be what became the escape route, and we can also see this image of a dead tree here, I guess used as a reference image to get the design all nice and twisted looking. Then we got not one, but two unused early designs for the Snapdragon, one angrier looking one, and one more relaxed like he's here to just have a good time. And speaking of having a good time, this early design of the spring bean sure looks to be having one, as its facial expression is almost creepy looking. Then we have early designs for the laser bean, an unused radish, this flower which I think could be an early version of the grimrose, some, uh, I don't know, daikon radishes or something, some sort of high-tech bush, whatever this veggie is. There's an early sketch of the sunbeam, as well as an unused sunsprout plant that was seemingly planned to eat up oncoming zombies, and by undergoing the process of zombosynthesis, would turn them into collectible sun. And I guess this was replaced with the toadstool, as it pretty much does the same thing. There are some early designs for the homing thistle, a few for the ghost pepper, where we can see several early designs for both its idle state, as well as its exploding scream, which all look much less frightening than how it's ultimately seen in the game. Then there are what I think are early designs for the Lava Guava, where it could also be seen holding some popcorn. There are some early designs for the Celery Stalker, where it appears as a single unit and would apparently act similar to the other scrapped punching plants we've already seen. This set of sketches reveals another scrapped plant idea for a palm tree that would apparently roll coconuts like a bowling ball towards oncoming zombies. There's a set of early sketches for the Charred Guard and outlining how it would fling zombies away. Then another scrapped plant idea is this bamboo plant that was planned to first be seen in Big Wave Beach. We got several early sketches of the Rotobega, including some mock-ups of how it would look in the game. Some alternate colors and early designs for the Stunyon, including a sketch of it having a much gnarlier burp than how it's seen in the game. There's a scrap design of the Red Stinger, where its face would have been on its stem instead of the flower, and here we can also see some early concepts for its regular and plant food boosted beam attack. There's an early design of the Gold Leaf, and some early designs for what I think is the beat again? Sorry, I'm not an expert in veggies. Okay, don't worry, we're almost through them all. Next up, we got an early, more simple design for the Toadstool, where here its chomp was seen much bigger. We got an unused concept design for the Time Warp plant, where frankly, I prefer this design way over the one that was ultimately chosen. There are some early sketches for the Jackal Lantern, including one where its flames were orange instead of green. Sketches of a Cyborg Walnut. Early sketches of the Dusk Lobber, some of which look quite different. A vine-looking fella that might have been a precursor to the Wasabi Whip, as they seem to have a similar attack. And many, many, many more. Then next up here, there are several early sketches of the primal plants seen in the game. Some of these, like for the primal pea shooters or sunflowers, look fairly similar to how they're seen in the game, just often less furry looking with the sunflower I guess. 
but there are also some early sketches for the Primal Potato Mine, and last but not least are quite a few scrap designs for the Primal Walnut. There's a bunch of stuff here including various degrees of spikes, looking like a Triceratops, a more fuzzy version I guess to better match the Pea Shooter and Sunflowers, this one here, and then straight up just being a slab. Nice. Next, there are also a few sketches that reveal numerous costume ideas for the plants, most of which I believe never went on to be used. So first we have this sheet for the pea shooter, and here we got it all, from a vampire, a clown, spider, having a beard, a ghost, having antenna, a Frankenstein, one not good for people with tripophobia, to even Jason and Terminator inspired costumes, and also straight up just wearing a paper bag. Then another sheet featuring some Halloween costume designs is surprisingly for the bok choy, and here we see some more ideas including a superhero getup, a human face mask, which is honestly kinda creepy, a mummy, and more. Honestly, these costume ideas are really cool, and although we did get some in the game, most of them aren't as interesting as these. And then lastly for the plants, this concept sketch here reveals that totally not Tabasco hot sauce was originally going to act as the buff that boosts plants in the game. And of course this got reworked into the game's plant food and the hot sauce just became a simple plot device as a topping for Crazy Dave's Taco that kicks off the game's story. Now I showed off most of the more interesting early sketches here, but not all of them. Like this cool set showing off some pretty slick looking design concepts for the sunflower. But if you would like to check out all of the documented concept sketches, I'll have the fandom page where you can peep them linked down in the description below. Now lastly for this section, although not technically a plant, there are also a few concept sketches that reveal that there were at least some plans for the flower pots to appear in this game too. And similar to the rooftop level from the first game, they would have been required to plant plants in areas without soil or sand. And here we can also of course see that the idea of them appearing in different qualities was tossed around too. From a crappy pot, to a regular one, to a gold or perma pot, all the way to a hover pot. And as we can read here, they were planned to be purchasable upgrades for the plants. And now lastly for this video, since we're already talking about early designs and such, there are also a few early versions of graphics that were seen in pre-release builds of the game. For example, in this screenshot, we can see early UI graphics for the seed packets, the power-ups, as well as the plant food bar on the bottom here. And speaking of which, the plant food graphic was also seen a bit different in these pre-release builds too. And then more interestingly, a few bits of concept art for the gameplay appear to reveal some more scrapped graphic designs as well as even some cut mechanics and more. The UI graphics in this mock-up look quite different once again, there are some more UI design ideas, including these touch me buttons here. There's a mock-up of a stage completion screen. And then finally, there's this mock-up of a power-up menu, where we can see a tactical cuke power-up that could be purchased. And as of the making of this video, no power-up of this name or look was ever added to the game. Well, at least this game, as a tactical cube power-up was added to future games in the series, including the Chinese version of Plants vs. Zombies 2, where, when called in, it can basically wipe out every zombie on screen. Talk about cucular warfare. And my friends, we'll leave it there, at least for now. There's way more stuff to cover for this game, so if you're interested in seeing more of this game on the channel, definitely let me know. But till then, check out some of my other Lost Bits videos, and be sure to subscribe to the channel to find your way back here in the future. And as always, thank you all so much for tuning in today, and I will see you in a bit.